We are together again just praising the Lord. And we thank God that you are available in his presence and he knows you are here. Can you imagine? God knows you are here. You are counted among the people that God you speak to. You are counted among the people that God you heal, God you anoint, God you strengthen. You are known. God knows you are here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, 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 wonderful. Uh, I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. Um, that's, that's my name and Christ is Lord. This is my wife here, Rosemary. And we have come with Joseph. Joseph, we serve God with Joseph in Nairobi. Uh, she's, she's so much involved in her administration, management, and uh, actuary. She's, he stays close to me to articulate the vision that I have, and he moves with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that makes him blessed, his family blessed, and that what you make you blessed here. Amen. Stay close to the pastor. Know his mind. Know the vision. Move with it. You'll be blessed. Amen. And that's very important when you work as a prophet, when you work as a servant. You know, and in church membership, I'm not talking about membership today, but let me just mention something. You are a church member in four ways. And one is above the other. One, by being born again, repenting all your sins, denouncing all your evils, and accepting Jesus as your Lord, you become a member of the body of, you become a member of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Whatever you are, God counts you as a member of the church that he owns on earth. But now, there's something extra than that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the church, the meaning of the word church, ecclesia, involves fellowshipping, gathering together, assembling together, fellowshipping together of those people who have been called out. So there should be a ecclesia whereby we fellowship, we gather, we assemble together. Amen. Amen. That active assembling together is, in, is important. Hallelujah. Amen. So the second part of membership is what Christ mentioned in the, in the Bible. That is Matthew. 28 from verse 18 to 20 says, Go ye and make disciples in every nation, not just born again people, but followers. A disciple is a person who is actively following. And you don't follow things that don't exist. You follow Jesus closely. You follow his teachings. You follow his lifestyle. You follow his practices. You follow the doctrines. There is something that you adhere to. Hallelujah. And Christ says, Go ye, make disciples in every nation, baptizing them in the name of of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism has several areas. You, you are baptized in the body of Christ. You are baptized in water. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. Baptized in fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Baptizing them. And then the Bible says, and teach them to obey all that which I have commanded you. There are things we teach you that we don't need your opinion because God has commanded us. Amen. When we tell you we baptize you in water, we don't have to discuss that. It's a command. There's not, we don't need your opinion whether we baptize you above the water, 
beside the water, around the water. The issue is in the water. Why? Jesus said it. When we say, receive the Holy Spirit, speak in new tongues, that's how it is. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17, Christ says, and these signs shall follow them who believes. In my name, they'll cast out demons. In my name, they'll speak in new tongues. You ask, do I speak? Yes, he said it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One time I was invited to an all-night prayer meeting in an Anglican church in Nairobi, a big church, big cathedral. Actually, um, the one who invited me was, I think, the assistant to the archbishop of the whole church in Kenya. And they said, Bishop, teach us about the Holy Spirit. I said, I'll teach you. You know how their altar appears? is awesome. If the, it's not like ours, is active altar. Their altar is active, but it reflects some fear. Ours reflects deliverance. No, they are okay. They are okay anyway. Uh, but I preach and preach and preach. And I say, no, I know you are Agrican, but I say it. I'm a Pentecostal, not by name, but real experience. And I say to them, for me, at the end of preaching, I must practice it. I said, after teaching, I need all people to come here and receive the Holy Spirit. I tell the truth, almost three quarters of the church came forward. I did not need to lay hands on them. I raised my hands and something like fire appeared on them. Almost, almost, I think all of them spoke in tongues for more than three hours in Anglican church. Hallelujah. From around 2 a.m. until morning, Unfortunately, the pastor, the senior pastor was not around. The senior pastor was informed, was in Singapore pursuing his master's degree in theology. And there was a problem now. Some elders met, including the wife of the pastor, to discuss the new innovation. They said, now this preacher is likely to carry away our members. I said, no, I'm not carrying away my, I'm mature enough. I don't need to transfer them. In Nairobi, people know I go out to where sinners are and we have big crusades. And also say the church is full. Our church was full. One time Dr. Kana came and said, no, Bishop, we can't understand this. The church is full all over, inside the compound, almost even to the toilets. A big revival. Hallelujah. And I said, no, you know, it, it was, and I left the church in the morning. Of course, the pastor, somebody called the pastor. When the pastor came back, and the report was made clearly about the new pastor who brought in a wave of extraordinary prayer. People are praying beyond the prayers that are written in the book. People are going beyond liturgy, liturgical order. And the pastor checked his diary and said, the same hour when his congregation received the Holy Spirit, it's the same hour he received the Holy Spirit while in Singapore. And he said, call back the, the bishop to pray for the rest, including my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You see, when it comes to the teachings, we don't have, there are things the Bible says, teach them to obey, not to give opinions, not to discuss, but to obey what I call.
commanded you. We have an obligation of teaching you to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it is marriage, we tell you one wife, one husband. So before you choose anyone, think twice. Because when you enter, our teaching is one wife, one husband. That's all. Teach them to obey what I commanded. It's not an issue of what you feel. It's what he commanded. It's not an issue of your intellect, your opinion, or your... It's what he commanded. And God, God can only flow in a church that accommodates what he commanded. God can only flow in a marriage that accommodate what he commanded. God can only flow in your habits if you accept what he commanded. So the second level of church membership is when you become a member by agreeing with the teachings. We teach you until you obey. Hallelujah. We make you a disciple through teaching and through your obeying, you are transformed by agreeing with the teaching until your habits, your prayer life, your work is a product of teaching. You know, sometimes you see people in churches and um, they don't have identity with the teachings. They are just themselves. Be yourself. We can't allow that. Be yourself and let that self be godly. <laughs> be yourself and let that self be molded by the word. If today you get married, where are the youth? If you get married uh, at, at, at night, you are sharing the same bed, eh? and uh, your husband feel like sleeping the way he feels. And his head is down, while your head is up, and he's stepping on your face. And you know, gentlemen, take care of me. You know, I am myself. <laughs> and you tell him, you know, brother, you need to note that you are not alone in this bed. We are both in this bed, and you can only be yourself within the boundaries of honoring that we are two. <laughs> Sometimes people are becoming themselves so much at the expense of the truth that you don't exist alone. Hallelujah. If today we are sharing a piece of meat, maybe one chicken, and it's I and you in the same house. And you eat all of it. <laughs> Just because you are yourself. You cannot be yourself at the expense of my existence. We are both in the house. Hallelujah! That's why we have to change people by teachings. You know why you have a lot of divorce? It's because people are themselves. You get married to a lady... And, uh, and you live by her, and no, she lives by her own rights. You live by your own right, and marriage has no definition. How are you? How is the preaching? Is it, is it, is, is it okay? Yeah. Are you understanding, friends? Yeah. And that's why you become a member by being transformed by teachings. We make you to be Christ-like so that when you get out there, hallelujah, you know, we had an issue with Muslims in France when they, are, they were at the tabas, and the government said, no, you are making women look ugly. We want to see their face. And they said, it is our faith. It was honored. Christians need to say it is my faith faith. Do I need to explain? No, it's my faith. Why Jesus commanded, 
why is my faith? Why Jesus is Lord? Why he rose from the dead, he is Lord? Why at the end of everything, I will report back to him? When governments will cease, when systems will cease, Jesus will remain on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. That's why at the end of the, of the Bible, the Bible says, and John saw a great white throne descending from heaven, and the one who was seated there, heavens and earth disappeared before his face, and their place will not be found anymore. We will remain the galaxies, systems in the air will disappear, earth will disappear, and we will remain with the one seated on the throne. Amen. I say we must honor him because before his face, heavens and earth will disappear. Governments will disappear, systems will disappear, constitutions will disappear, the pride of man will disappear. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. You are church member by being transformed by the teachings of the one who is our destiny. You can't go to heaven your way. You can only go to heaven his way. You cannot be blessed within your rights. You can only be blessed within his rights. You cannot be be covered. You cannot live in his peace in your own way. You can only enjoy his peace within his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We always tell people, and God bless you. And the, wait, the fourth level of membership, hallelujah, is when we fellowship together. Let me have you, brother, here. That other brother, that sister. Yes, yes, come here. Yes. Come, 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 come. Come, come. See, this is a church. This is a church. When we fellowship together, ecclesia. Ecclesia is the Greek meaning of church. Whereby it's fellowshipping, gathering together. Actually, physical gathering. We need you. Amen. Hallelujah. Not through social media, it's, it's important to have social media, but actually, physical, physical, you sacrifice to see me, how I'm doing. We worship together. It is assembling together of those people who have been called out. He was called out of slavery. He was called out of immorality, called out of all evil. And we have a new identity. We are called out. We are called out now. We are called out. If you want to know us, our new title is called out once. Our identity is not where we came from. Our identity is not where we were born. Our identity is not our tribe. Our identity is not our culture. Our identity is we were called out and we all meet in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, and behold, all things are new. Oh, when I see you, I see Christ. When I see you, I don't see your tribe. I don't see your pride. I don't see you are big, big or small. I see Christ in you. And then the third level is why we fellowship now. When we fellowship together, fellowship together, fellowship together, fellowship together, God changes our fellowship into what he calls body of Christ. Look at me. This is my body. Is it okay? The Bible says Jesus is the head. And you know the system, nervous system. Every organ in the body has two fibers, nervous fibers. One taking message to the head, the central nervous system. And another one, taking message from the head to the organ. This one takes message to the head. The head interprets the message and bring it. If I pinch my finger, the message goes up. 
it is interpreted to be pain, and I feel pain. Hello? Amen. And then the head is Jesus Christ. We fellowship together so much until we become members by function. Amen. You are the head, the right hand. Maybe the other one is the left hand. You are the leg of the church under the head. When the church wants to move, the head tells you, move the church. You are the left leg, brother, and you can't miss church service because you are the legs. And whenever you try to miss the church service, you feel like there's something wrong with you because the head is commanding you. Go to the church because the church wants to move and you are the legs. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe you could be the mouth of the church and the church wants to speak and you, you needed the church. You could be the backbone of the church or under the head. You be, not at that level of church membership. You are member by function. The fourth level, because some people just attend the church and go home. You need to be a member. The fourth level is becoming a member of the anointing. We will talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you getting the, the meaning? Amen. The fourth one, I'll teach you maybe tomorrow before I go back to Kenya, and I, it will revolutionize you. When you become a member of the prophetic anointing and priesthood anointing in the church, that's when you are produced in the level of blessings and gifting you should be in the church. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. May God keep you. Amen. God anoint you, friends. I, I, today I will share partially about a message on clear the standard. I know I preach about membership. This was, that was my testimony. Is it, that was an introduction. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I told you the other day, friends, something must happen. We are going to be partners. When I talk about 10,000 in Nairobi, we will talk about it here in, in Ireland. It must happen. And do not fear. God moves. There's a time I visited a lot UK, and God moves so much. In a unique way, I had a lot of followers, especially idiots a lot. They would follow me and feel drunk, feel the horse. Revival, if you, you know, you may claim that maybe people in Ireland are not responding to the gospel. There's nothing like failing to respond to the gospel. If Jesus is presented the way he presented himself in the gospel, he will save a lot. Jesus is Jesus who meets the needs. Christ is Christ who operates on supernatural. Supernatural in the natural. We need to address the issues. And God bless you. Now, shortly let me share about clear. Remember our message is clear the way. Clear the can't have our lives stagnating or st stuck. One of the things, yesterday we read a scripture in Mark chapter 4 when Christ said, let us cross over. Let's move to Mark chapter 5. Very quickly, huh? Mark chapter 5. And then we will be blessed. I hope you are, you are there right now. Mark chapter 5. The Bible says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea in the country of Gadarenes. And when he was come out, this is King James Version, no problem. 
When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tubes a man with unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tubes of grace. And no man could bide him, no, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bowed with fetters and chains, and the chains have been plucked asunder. He has he could break the chains, and the fetters broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, day and night, he was in the mountains and in the tubes, crying and cutting himself with his toes. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I plead with you by God that you torment us not. And he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Hallelujah. Now, you see, friends, majority of the people are living in standards that are not your true standard. The Bible says this man was possessed. And when Christ spoke to the demon, the demons talked about legion. Legion could have been more than 2,000 demons in one man. Live around that one, once a single demon that torments you, I don't know. But thousands of demons in one person. Bible says two things. No man could hold him. Number two, no one could tame him. Two desperate situations. No man would hold him. So already there was a conclusion in the society among the family members that it's known no weapon, no, no chain can hold that man. No power that exists by that time would hold that man. And that was the conclusion. And then the second statement was, no one could tame him. In other words, you try force your neighbor, you try to soothe him, tame him, like a lion, no one would tame him. And that's how life was. Hallelujah. And I'll say this, friends, by the grace of God, because it's not my time. I want to speak to a situation in my life and in your life where you have been forced to admit, where you have been forced to accept that no power, nothing. You know, you know, I'm saying this. You live a life, you know, all people have this kind of life. In one area, you are so strong. In one, another year, you are so strong. But there's an area in your life where you become weak. You find a woman in the church so happy in all things. But when you remember your marriage, you lose all the strength. You find a father and a mother in the church, rejoicing in all manner. But when you remember your son, who is a drug addict, you lose strength. Hello, praise God. You will find a man or a brother in the church, even the youth. You know you have a chronic disease in your body and you've tried all the medicine. You've tried to see yet the most qualified physicians. It is clear the more you live, the more hopeless you're becoming and you know very well I have 
a disease in my body that cannot be healed, that cannot be healed, cannot be handled by medicine. When you remember that area, you lose strength. An area we say nothing that exists around can hold it. Nothing that can, no one that exists around can tame it. Hello, praise God. Hallelujah. Things that have lost control, things that cannot be tamed, powers that cannot be held, and devil is using that area. Whenever you try to run and make some progress, he uses that area to pull you down. Whenever you want to become better, he uses that painful area of life to pull you down. Right now, those are the stations that the Holy Spirit wants to address in this meeting. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Lord you do something. The Lord you do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One time, the this woman who came to, to the office and said, Now, Bishop, I have a problem, heart problem. It is caused by my only son. He's lost in drugs. And actually, the son was torturing the mother. He said, no, Bishop, I serve God, but whenever I remember that son, and I said, no, Madam, I just need that man here. Christ is at work. The rehabilitation program are not really doing the best. They are trying to come, but not to bring deliverance. He said, Bishop, that person cannot come. I had a pamphlet of several of teachings that I offer to people outside there. Miracle part one, miracle part two, dreams, some good topics. I said, go with this pamphlet and he will lead. I said, Bishop, that man has no interest. I said, I said it with anointing. You know, when went, she went home, she gave it to the son. The son took it. You know, in an unusual way, it's as if the drug, drugs read him that way. He read through once, twice, did not sleep. Among the teachings, I've written about the dreams. And how do you discern and interpret dreams? At night, he had one of the dreams. There's a dream about if you dream harvesting ripe fruits, what it means. Actually, she had a dream. He and his sister, I think, it's, I think their sister, or the mother, our cousin, no, but they, no, sorry, they were born a man and a girl. So he dreamed him and his sister harvesting ripe mangoes. To him, it meant the years and the season of harvest or becoming what God ordained you for is coming, is starting. Do you know what happened? In the dream, he changed. Woke up, started praying. In the morning, she said, he said to her, my mom, I am now totally different. I know my season to harvest has come. I and my sister, from that moment, he never takes drugs. He is born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have used, exhausted your methods, but God... He has his own weapon. And tonight we are reaching out to those deep levels that Satan is using to pull you down. 
and God will do a miracle. And before this meeting ends, there will be testimony. Say amen. amen. You know, when somebody is possessed, you speak the way demons speak. You think the way demons think. You move in the way demons move. This man had three problems. He stayed naked throughout. Hello, praise God. The second problem, he did not have his mind. When you are possessed, you never have your mind. You have the demon mind. When you are possessed, you never settle. Demons never allow you to settle. If you read the scripture, there's what I refer to, the three outcomes of deliverance. In Mark chapter 5, verse 15, the Bible says, And when they came to Jesus, and saw that person who was possessed with the devil, and who had thousands of demons, they found him with three outcomes of deliverance. First one, hallelujah, the man was sitting. Second one, the man was clothed. The third one, he had his right mind. I want to introduce to you the three outcomes of deliverance. The first one, you are covered. No more shame. You are covered. You are clothed with the right glory. The second one, hallelujah, you settle. In career, you settle. In marriage, you settle. In your choices, you settle. In your life, you settle. Hallelujah. And then that outcome of deliverance, you receive your right mind. You are gifted and talented. You are an intelligent person. It's only that the world has joked aloud, has interfered with the right mind. We are now restoring you to a position of right mind. And in his right mind. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, this young man who came to my office, he was in high school. And uh, almost to sit for his certificate education. In Kenya, we call it, it's from four in high school, the, the last class in high school, in a national school. But this boy, since he joined high school, Form 2, I don't call it level 2 here, whichever, uh, class 2, grade 2, he started getting D, E, D, failure. Grade 3, failure. And he came to me when he was remaining with only four months to sit for the final exam. And the boy stayed in my office. Sometimes we are very busy. Until night, I said to him, now, gentlemen, what, how are you? And he brought in all the reports since Form 2, D, E, D minus, E, since grade 2. And he said, I said, brother, do you believe I'm a prophet of God? Do you believe God can speak? And he said, Bishop, let God speak. I said, I want to release your right mind. These grades don't reflect your right mind. Can you put away all those papers? Yes. And the boy had faith. I said, I want to speak your right grade. I said, in the final exam, you will not get D. You will not get C. You will get a strong B plus. Or A. He said, do you believe so? Yes. I said, in the name of Jesus, I remove the wrong might. And by the anointing of the ghost, I declare the right might. 
Parents had withdrew, withdrawn. There's no hope. He's the firstborn. Parents had no hope now. In the final exam, he had A minus. He only missed two points to get A plain, which is the highest level. Now he's joined university, he's doing engineering. This other life is beyond the understanding of the parents. It can only be understood by me and the boy. Parents don't understand. They said, Bishop, we cannot understand how our son relocated from E to A. I said, it is part of deliverance. Because when you are delivered, you are clothed. When you are delivered, you settle. When you are delivered, you receive your right mind. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tonight I'm declaring the standard you ought to have to be in. You know, when God delivers you, you know something? I've been praying since I came to this place. Pastor God, as we buy the 10,000 seater, when I leave this place, God will disturb you. <laughs> because you are getting, I don't think you are buying this. The revival God is bringing is so big that the vision of this structure cannot contain the product. And before I leave this, I'll pray for you people. And you are becoming so rich that within months, you force the pastor to look for new premises, not to hire, but to buy. Amen. There's anointing. You know, I prayed so much, and God spoke to me about raising kingdom millionaires. I went to America Lakewood, and I met the pastor. Our church were meeting in Seventh day hall. So, seventh day meet on Saturday. So, and our church can be accommodated on Sunday. When I was consecrating the bishop, I said, This anointing is so expensive <laughs> to meet, to operate in a hired hall. The anointing that God is giving you is changing now, it's so much expensive to operate in a hired hall. Let me ask, let me something. You know, when God was sending his children to Canaan, he said, when you get there, set aside a place where my name will dwell. Whenever the church meet in a hired place, you are unable to consecrate that place. It's hired. Get me a place where my name will dwell. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll share that later. Let me, let, let me stop there. But I said the truth. You know, I prophesied to a church in Lakewood until I went there for a fundraising. You can imagine coming from Kenya to lead a fundraising in America. Compare the, sh you know, you saw those words, compare and contrast. <laughs> and they said, Bishop, whenever we do our fundraising, we lay $50,000, $4,000. But when I read the fundraising, they raised $500,000. It's not an issue of where you come from. It's an issue of anointing. Anointing is never geographical. 
Anointing is never satisfied. It's not within social status. Gifting transcends all status. And I believe one time I'll come here to lead a fund raising, but I'll try to get euro from Kenya, <laughs> put euro in my pocket, and lead a fund raising here. Because as Jehovah lives, one of the great burdens I have for you people is when you set aside a place where the name of the Lord will dwell. And that one is starting this week. Before I leave, that one. When I leave this place, you become so rich that the honor and the dignity that God will put in you will not allow you to worship in a hired hall. Pastor, you become so blessed and so anointed that the anointing in you will be so honorable that we will not allow you to live in a hired hall. The walls will be a restriction. Hallelujah. And God, you raise gifts in you people and you reach out and be very powerful. Hallelujah. I tell you the outcome of deliverance. You are covered with glory. You are covered with glory. You are covered with what reflects the glory of Christ. Secondly, you settle. And thirdly, you receive your right mind. The Lord bless this church. The Lord anoint this church. Hallelujah. You know, when Jabez prayed, if you go to the scripture, let me just end up by reading the scripture. If you go to First Chronicles, how you God's children? Are you okay? Yes. You are the feet of Christ, don't fear. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The God we serve is powerful. Now, when Jabez was praying, and um, he, he, he was born, and the name that was given to him, the Bible says, this man was honorable. That is First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. He was, Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. You know, the issue of Jabez is also another issue of compare and contrast. The first part of his definition, the first part, when Bible starts talking about Jabez, the introductory part says he was honorable more than all his brothers. But the second part, it is something that was instilled on him, not original. Bible says, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Whenever you visit their family, the mother would introduce all the children. Maybe the firstborn name is happy. The second one is glory. The third one is grace. But the, the fourth one is Jabez. And everybody will ask, we have no problem with other names, but we have a problem with this one. You have good names for our other children. But you have a peculiar name for this one. And every time you go for dinner, Every time they'll go for a party, every time they'll go for a birthday, the mother would start and say, he is Jabez. I bore him in pain. His name means sorrow. And the mother, you know, women are so emotional and women are detailed. <laughs> that could not be enough. 
He will say, can I explain what happened when I was giving birth to this? When I gave birth to this one, the first one, I never lived but so long. But this one, I almost died. Until, until demons had an opening in the life of Jabez. And because of that kind of introduction from the mother, the person who gave birth to you, it affected him. Socially, when you relate with him, you feel like you are relating with a cast person. And when Jabez would try to explain himself out, people would say, no, no, gentlemen, don't try to explain otherwise. Your mother has said so. <laughs> when Jabez will say, no, brothers and sisters, I dreamt about, oh, no, 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 don't say otherwise. You are the person who raised you. The person who gave birth to you has this name as your origin. Your roots are in the name. Your identity are in that name. You have an experiential name. Until his attitude was that way, his feelings were that way, people related with him that way, at the place of work, he could not be promoted. He just, in a hallelujah. Amen. Can I prove it? Because nobody prayed for Jabez. No bishop, no pastor dared pray for him. The mother did a lot of evangelism, mass and personal evangelism, until the whole world was saturated with such information. So even bishops would not dare pray for him, not the deliverance. <laughs> and one day, Jabez said, now, I don't need any man. I need God now. And he said, now, let me face God, who has a better, deeper, original plan. Because God, when he spoke to Jeremiah, he referred to his mother just as an agent of birth. He said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. In other words, Jeremiah, your mother just felt a being growing the stomach in the womb. I'm the one who put you there. And before you are born, I approved you. I chose you. I sanctified you to be a prophet. And Jabez said, now let me go back to God. Who knew me before he formed me in my mother's womb? And who has his own name away from what my mother knew? That before I was born, God must have appointed me, chosen me to be otherwise. And he went to God and said, now God, have this prayer. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Don't just bless me. Bless me indeed. Let blessings be my labor. Let blessings be my name. Let blessings be my identity. Let blessings be my message. Let blessings be a testimony around me. Let blessings be my sign. Bless me indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enlarge my territories. And he says, and that your hand remain on me, be over me, that out, and, and you keep me from evil. And finally, he had to terminate the issue of pain. Yes, he says, I may not cause pain. He is saying, although from birth pain has formed me, Lord, as you bless me, I terminate pain. Yeah. From here, going up, forth. There will be no pain. 
Hallelujah. God is not only blessing you, but he is terminating a curse. He is terminating an issue. From today, Lord, pain was caused on me. From today, my generation, no pain will be caused. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territories. Your mighty hand be upon me. That I'll, I'll not fall in any evil. But Lord, remember, from now, I don't want to see pain in my generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, that's what God is doing now in this church. Amen. Be blessed indeed. Amen. Receive enlarged territories. The hand of the Lord be upon you. That there will be no evil around you. And from now, there is some pain, there is some problems, there are some, some struggles that have followed you. You are not the cause. They were instilled on you by somebody. You inherited them. You know, sometimes I tell people, you may, you may inherit them from their social inheritance. You grew up in an environment that caused something in your life. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, the Lord is stopping it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, know, you know when God called Prophet Isaiah, he said, God, I'm a man of bad lips, evil lips, eh? And he lives among people of such evil. You know, this evil you do can only allow you to live socially, comfortably with the people with such evil. If you are drunkard, you can only live comfortably with the drunkard. If you are fornicator, you can only be comfortable with fornicators. And that's why Isaiah said, I'm a man of bad lips. And I live among people of bad lips. In, in other words, I am a sinner personally and a sinner socially. I'm a personal sinner and a social sinner. The sin I do allows me only to associate with the people of that level. Today, God will revolutionize you. Amen. There are people you live. Yes. You admire walking with visionaries. You admire running after people who inspire you in the right direction. You will admire attachment with gifted and talented people. God is changing your youth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We may not finish all this. We finish it another day. But I want to say something. There's a man known as Gideon in the Bible. Gideon. You have heard about Gideon? Yes. Go and read Judges chapter 6. You know, when God appeared to Gideon, Gideon was hiding and doing the wrong thing in the right place. <laughs> you know, when you are under fear, you are also abnormal, and yet, because of fear, you know what you should do, but you do the wrong thing. Hallelujah. And, um, and the angel of the Lord found him hiding in a, in a, in a hole somewhere. He said, Gideon, how are you? You know, the Israelites were slaves to Midianites. Real slaves. And Gideon was hiding from them. And God comes and says, Gideon, this is your new name. You are mighty man of war. Mighty man of valor. You are mighty man. 
And Gideon said, now, God, I have an issue with you. That name does not fit me. It's contrary to who I am. The first question he asked, where, where are the miracles that God promised Israel through the mouth of Moses? God spoke about our uniqueness, and yet we are slaves. God said to Abraham, we will rule the world, but the world is ruling over us. Where are the miracles? Sometimes you live a life whereby instead of saying yes, you question the promises of God. Another thing, he said now, you know, you know, God did not answer that question. God said, Gideon, I don't have to come too low to analyze low things. There are times God will remain exalted and will never come too low to waste time on elementalish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God said, no, no, Gideon, you are mighty because I will be with you. Full stop. My presence will make you strong. He said, it's okay. I understand that one. Let me go to the second point. Yes. Which one? My family, I, I belong to the tribe of Manasseh, and our family, my father is the poorest in that tribe, and I, in the family of my dad, I'm the least. Hallelujah. And God said, now Gideon, what do you mean? I'm saying that. God, God repeated again, Gideon, you are mighty man, I will be with you. And you are going to defeat Midianites just as one person. God is so powerful Amen. that he cannot beg from your background. Uh -huh. He is so absolute Amen. that he is not, he is so much self-existing. Hallelujah. He is not asking for your help. He is so much perfect and complete. He lacks nothing. He cannot borrow. He can only lend or give. Hallelujah. And then you realize at night, uh, God caused Gideon to wake up. He said, Gideon, I want to give you the first assignment. And the first assignment is assignment to your family. Go to your father's house. At the compound of the house, you find an altar of a very evil God, bar God. Destroy it completely. And on it, Build the altar of your God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what God was saying to, 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 to Gideon? He was saying, your father is the poorest because he has the wrong altar in the house. There's something I want to, to, to test with fresh. You know, some of us, you just grew up in a family. You just grew up in a family. You got married into a family. You are struggling with standards that you can't comprehend. You cannot hold them or tame them. Sometimes you raise your children, and what you hate most is what they admire most. And you wonder, where did they get this from? Hello, praise God. You check your family, brothers and sisters, however complicated or sophisticated the family, the society is, you realize there's a pattern in your family. You know, we need to think. You know, sometimes I thought about our family. All people are teachers. 
My dad was a teacher, my mother was a teacher. Our first born a teacher, second born a teacher, third born a teacher. I was a teacher, I resigned. <laughs> and the other one? I resigned from, from, from the government. Hallelujah. And in the kingdom, it was amplified. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something you, you had a, this pattern. How? <laughs> My uncles are teachers. 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 Go to a family whereby you find them, some are, um, they are, they are dressmakers, 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 dressmakers. You try to be otherwise. You can only become better in that. <laughs> Hello? And some are, some are employed in security work. Policemen, 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 policemen. You t and, the, and just check around. Whenever they think, they think about security. <laughs> Your grandmother died of arthritis. Your uncle died of arthritis. Your mother died of arthritis. And you, some of your siblings, have it. No! What is that? That's what doctors these days cannot explain. They're talking about psychosomatic or, or diseases in families. That's all. They try to, to analyze it genetically. But they are, you know, when you study something, when you have a PhD of something, a PhD of, of, on something, it is faithful study of that thing. It's not changing it. You have a PhD in this. It is just faithful study. Just study it faithfully. <laughs> So that you can get PhD in it. <laughs> so what doctors are doing, they are trying to study those diseases faithfully. <laughs> they are saying that today they can't tell us what causes cancer. They talk about some cells becoming mad, but in Medical research, they are saying, it's not really known. It's not clear. Check those doctors who are who come here for conventions. Eh? They say, no, we we, are, we don't yet know. But friends, in Jesus Christ's name, there are things we need to do. Don't just exist in pre-existing. There are people who are existing in what pre-existed. You never produced your existence, you conformed to pre-existing. Uh, 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 hello, praise God. Those people who fought for independence in Africa, even here in America, there are people who said, no, we can't proceed this way. We need family liberators. Yes. We need people who can say there is something wrong here. Mm. And that's why back in Nairobi, I've started family prayers. I am telling brothers and sisters, I want to declare the altar of the blood of Jesus in every family. We want to operate on an altar that we know. Amen. We want to operate on an altar that we have established. We want to operate on an altar that you speak to our children and our grandchildren. We want to operate on an altar like the one Jabez established. In Jesus' name! Hallelujah! We can't have this kind of existence whereby you go to a family, all children are drug addicts. 
involved in every source, every form of sex perversion. You know, it's as if that spirit is a contagious thing, contagious thing. And we say now it's okay, it's, a sad, it's not society. We need, no, no, we can't allow that. We can't allow that. We need the altar of the blood of Jesus Christ to replace strange altars. To replace strange altars. In Jesus' name. When my, my uncle died of cancer, the firstborn, secondborn cancer, thirdborn cancer, although they are Catholics, I went straight there and declared the end of that altar and put to a terminal end that kind of attack. It is stopped. And today I'm, I'm, we want to declare an altar of Jehovah. God said to Gideon, destroy the altar of satanic God that your dad has put in the compound destroy it, remove it, and on it establish the altar of your God, the God I know, the God I serve, the anointing in my life. In the name of Jesus, we are not called to conform. We are called to produce. We are not God called just to exist on what existed. We are called to produce our own existence drawn from the throne of God. From today, I want to pray now. We may not finish this subject. Let's start for prayer. Let's start for prayer. God is raising you. You are becoming a product of deliverance. And the man who was known to be evil was found, clothed, seated, and with his right might. The God I serve cover you. The God we are preaching cover you now. The God we are preaching, hallelujah, cause you to settle. The God we are preaching, give our children, give our fathers and mothers their right mind. For we are intelligent. We are talented and gifted. Receive your right mind. You are right mind for the gift. You are right mind for business. In the Rabba Just close your eyes and pray for your soul. Tell God, God, you are my strength. There is an evil you did. Listen now. There is an evil sin against God because sin can only be done against holy God that you did. And you never repented. And whenever you try to pray, Whenever you try to serve God, that sin haunts you. It haunts you. You try to, what you have been trying to do is to forget it. Sin is never removed by forgetting or making it a historical thing. Sin is removed by true repentance. And today, I don't want to know what happened, but today the voice of the devil using that sin will stop and God will forgive you completely and from today you will worship with freedom and breakthrough in Jesus name. Hallelujah. There is a demonic attack. Sometimes it attacks you through dreams. Sometimes it attacks you in strange ways, maybe using people and circumstances. And you are, you are not able to be yourself. 
You sense right now as I speak, you are not yourself. You are not yourself. You are a product of some stretch process that makes you fear, that makes you withdraw, that makes you run away. I want to destroy that demon. Its voice, the fear, and the pattern it has produced in your life, it has to go. Raise your hands and pray for your life. Oh, Rami Keshetema. As you pray, listen to me. There is a station, a station in your life, a station that you never go through. You try your best. You get to a station you never get through. You start a new business. When you get there, you never get through. You borrow a loan to establish a new thing. You get there, you get terminated. I want to tell the truth, I'm speaking to it. And from today, there will be unhindered progress in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's an area of injury. You have been wounded. Spiritually wounded. Mentally and socially, emotionally wounded. And you need your healing. And in most instances, that area where you are wounded, that is the area that you are always attacked. That's the area they hate so much. Whenever people get closer to you, they hate at that wounded area. God is healing you right now. Eh? And next time they try to hit at that area, you will not feel anything because you'll be totally healed. In Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. O makataraba. Sekerema. Yokoposo karibabo. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Shererema. Shernami kese korobo zaya. You are saying in your heart, there's something you did You've not been able to overcome it. It always haunts you. God wants to terminate that evil. He will forgive you. There's a demonic challenge you have been undergoing. I want to speak that demon. It will never speak in your family. There's a station of attack where you never get through. You go and try all your level best. You never get through there. I'm going to command away and you are going very far in the kingdom. In the name of the Lord, there's an area where you are injured, you are wounded, and that wound in your heart, in your life, has stayed so long, and people who get across you, instead of healing you, they always injure you more. But God will give you permanent healing, and there will be no pain again. Let's pray. If, if you have one of those, raise your hand up as Jesus visits you in a mighty way. Yes, raise your hand up. You are saying there is a sin you did that always haunts you. You want it to end today. There's a demonic challenge that has fought your heart all through. You want that demon to get out of your life. There's a station of attack why you never get through. You reach there, you are finished. And you have remained frustrated all through. I want to command the way out now. There's an area your heart or your soul, your feelings are injured. And you are saying, God, this wood is too much. Heal me, Lord. If that is your prayer, raise your hands to heaven. Believe it. Believe it. I would like you to come here. Just come here. Just encourage your heart and join me here. Tell God, God, I need you. Gentlemen, just come. Trust God, just come. Let's talk to God about it. Just come here. Come, 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 come. Come. Just trust God and be serious now. Oh, Shara Rabba. Yes, yes. Come, 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 come. There's power in the blood of the Lord. Step on this area. Don't, don't fear. 
Just come here. And praise him before I leave. The Lord wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We have a moment of praying that the Holy Ghost will come upon you in a mighty way. God wants to anoint the praise team in a mighty way. In the name of raise your hands to heaven now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. This is the day of your deliverance. There's a moment of your deliverance now. In the name of Jesus, Satan, get out of, of these people. Get out of their bodies. Get out of their souls. Get out, devil. Powers of darkness. Altars of fear. Altars of curses. Altars of defeat. I break them all by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin that has tortured your life. Oh, Shedda Bibo, Shandara Bababo. I release you from the devil. I release you now from the powers of darkness. The Lord set you free. From today, no evil will touch you. From today, no power of darkness will touch your life. I release you. My sister, speaking in tongues, God is obsessing you now. Just speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. We keep our casa. And then, let's continue, continue. We keep our casa. Share, 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 share. My brother, you know God loves you so much. And you are gifted. But you have never become what you really desire. Today, I set you free from Satan and all works of darkness. All pains that you have adored, you have going. Be healed now. The Lord set you free. My God, you've lived your own life until you got exhausted. You reach a point where you felt, Lord, I'm nothing. But from today, God forgives all evil you have done. And God will fill you with his love. The blood of Jesus Christ set you free. In Jesus' name. The Lord blesses your hands. You work so hard, but you never prosper. From today, the Lord prosper you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You reach a point whereby you just leave, not the purpose of living. You've lost the new taste of life. But God forgives you from today. The Lord forgives you now. In Jesus' name. You've lost control. My sister, one thing that makes you feel like living is not meaningful is because you've lost control of issues. But from today, God placed things under you. Receive the power of dominion. In Jesus' name, Father, bless your servant. Bless him from today. Bless him from today. I declare the altar of the blood of Jesus in your family. I declare the altar of the resurrected Christ in your family. From today, things are changing. Every discouragement and hindrance is gone. You will progress in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. I'd like you to raise your hands to heaven now. Just tell God thank you. Because from today, you are delivered. 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 The Mose Kenema, young man, God set you free from sin. From today, you will serve God with all the joy that God has for you. In Jesus' name. Tell God thank you. Just tell God thank you. Tell God thank you. Believe it. Believe it. The word of God is being perfected in your life. Believe it. Oh, take a moment of worship. Tell God, I thank you, Lord. I am a Kase Kenema. Just tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. You are healed. I, uh, I say you are healed. <laughs> Listen. Any brother or sister here, there is a persistent pain or disease in your family. I want to declare something. Don't worry. You may have suffered a lot. 
you may have lost confidence. You may have lost even the vision. I need to do this. As I pray, just have faith, however little or much it will be. But from this moment, check that disease that is terminating people in your family. You notice it's gone. I stand here before God and an anointed Holy Spirit to tell me that demonic attack, that disease, terminal chronic disease in your family that is affecting you people, that curse that surrounds family members, that you reach a point you never get through, those things are gone. In Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. I crush and put to an end every disease, every chronic pain and suffering. It is now destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. No more premature death. I declare long life with the fulfillment of seasons. I declare long life. That curse, that station that always stopped you, that standard of slavery, that however much you try, you never get through. You will know that God visited this church and he's speaking. Amen. From today, there will be progress ahead of you. Amen. Academically, intellectually, financially. I say by the authority of heaven, by the authority of the throne of God, there will be unhindered progress. And pastor, we will attest that even when I leave this place. That the children of this church, yes. academically, they are moving very far. Yes. Members of this church, we will move from glory to glory yes. in intelligence, in gifting, and finances. Yes. For God is raising you yes. for the glorious altar yes. that He is giving this church. Yes. That says the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, I give you praise for hearing our prayer. Receive blessings. God's children receive blessings. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. He was seated. He was clothed and had right mind. Receive the cover. Receive power to settle. Receive your right gifted and talented mind. God has done it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. Thank you. God bless your life. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.